Hey collectors, before we get started with this week's concert poster conversation, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content Go Collect has to offer. Welcome back to another concert poster conversation with Glenn Trosh from the Psychedelic Art Exchange. I'm Katie and today we're finally talking about the Grateful Dead in what is arguably their most famous iconic concert poster of all time. So that's fair. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the image became a symbol of the band from Absolutely. from the beginning. This was not the first time that the skeleton was used in conjunction with the Grateful Dead. That was FD 12. But this this was the first skeleton that stuck. This this was uh, it's a lasting image. Yeah, uh, this is. So this is the FD 26 and it is a Mouse and Kelly poster. And, you know, that in itself is an important story right there. Avalon Ballroom 66, uh, September, yeah, and Mouse and Kelly, they, they found this central image while flipping through books in the San Francisco Library, and they found this illustration from an early 20th century edition of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, and it was illustrated by Edmund Sullivan, the central image, uh, you know, they knew instantly when they saw this, and... Um, so all they really did was kind of add in the color scheme. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they had good eyes and they did the lettering and whatnot, but they, they, they appropriated images, and this was a very ex successful uh, appropriation of said image. Right, so. and that was their whole thing. I mean, right before this, they'd done the FD-14, which was classically appropriated <laughs> image as well. Yeah, the zigzag man. Yeah, no, they, they dug into popular culture and grabbed elements and, um, and played with them. It was, uh, and it was successful for them that early on, yes. Why don't you talk a little bit about the importance of the Grateful Dead and specifically in 1966? The Grateful Dead in 1966. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot has been said about the subject, and I'm, You're you know, not as qualified. Expert. Uh, not in 66. All right, 66, so I mean, the 66. This was the again the very innocence of the hate, and the dead were some of the most popular residents, but they weren't like the most successful band. They weren't trying to be anything. Uh, it was Jefferson Airplane that became the first band that got a record contract and became right. a big deal. The Dead, not so much. They were not photogenic and they didn't want to play in the music industry. They just wanted to have fun. They were, they were, they were as much a part of the hate as anything, uh, but it was, it was it was a different it was a different band it was the 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 early days it was pig's band back then it was pig yeah, pen yeah, ron mckernan he was a blues singer and he went off on these raps and he was he, you know he was the one that got the audience interested i mean and jerry was a brilliant um player uh, even back then he was a banjo player that did taken up guitar and but he hadn't been deified yet well that whole arc is i mean <laughs> i mean he was he was never wanted to be the leader of the band if there ever was a leader of the band it was pigpen at that time but the band took on so many incarnations over the years but this is this is the earliest you know this it was very raw it was very rough um they were awfully high a lot of the time they were having a good time um you know the, this was the they they got their start playing the acid tests. So that was, it, yeah. yeah, it's a good story. Talk a little bit about the acid tests. The acid tests. Oh, um, so yeah, that was integral in the birth of the Grateful Dead. Ken Kesey, who got a bunch of cash for uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, drove a multicolored school bus across the country and back again, and it became a thing of legend. He came back and started having um, LSD parties in San Francisco and LA and the dead were the house band it was it's a it's a much deeper story but that's uh, the cliff notes version so why this particular poster is just so famous what is it about this that people are gravitating towards why does everybody want this poster well the, yeah collection? I mean if you're if you're collecting Grateful Dead posters this is 
a poster that you have to have. It's the most famous poster image. And it became the cover of Live Dead, um, and it has stuck with the band ever since. But I don't know what's, if there's something captivating about it. Um, it the image is. Is it one of the it? rarest pieces out there, actually, or does it just have this kind of like mythos attached Not to it? Not the rarest, but is super important and super valuable. Uh, it's the first psychedelic concert poster to hit the hundred thousand dollar mark. So, yeah. and yeah, a, a nine eight sold in Heritage, and it was it was a huge result. This is a big milestone for this hobby. Yeah, I believe that one was 118,000 and then just like a month ago there was one that sold for There was a 99 that sold for 100,000, which mm -hmm. opens up the whole debate about uh, CGC grading and that's uh, yeah. again it's a whole nother conversation that we can have uh, <laughs> for a long time. And um, yeah, and I'd love to have that conversation, but right now we'll just say that CGC grading has helped level the playing field at least as far as grade goes and um, is allowing it to reach these new levels of value. So I'm kind of curious about the handbill. What, what do those usually go for in prime condition? Nowadays, uh, now this is a, a, a 3,000 dollar item in top shape uh, and yeah the the handbill is quickly rising in value this is and and i you know i don't know how many more survived or less survived but i you know i think that the handbills were more likely to get tossed i mean it was i i'm not sure the numbers but the handbill is quickly rising in value this is yeah it's, and it's still a value and one of the greatest things about the Grateful Dead in the history of concert posters is that they're there all the way from the beginning, all the way, I mean, still today. And they inspired some of the best imagery. I mean, that's the, you know, the, the catalog of Grateful Dead art is huge and it encompasses all of the artists. It really is, you know, whether you like them or not, it, you, you know, you can't deny their importance as far as the artwork goes. They are, uh, you know, singly the, the most illustrated band, I would say. I can say that without fear of contradiction. No, they definitely yeah. are. And I mean, they've been through so many incarnations. I mean, there's the Grateful Dead and then everything that happened after Jerry died. And today there's right. it's, it's, Dead and Company. It's still a thing. It's yeah. still a vibrant community. It's still, it has what carried the ethic of Haight Asbury to this day. If, uh, I mean, the Grateful Dead are the, you know, they kept the bus moving. They, you know, I mean, the, uh, this is a grand statement, and, you know, I'm welcome to debate this, but in many ways, the most important American rock and roll band of all time. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Challenge me. I'd love if to have the conversation. If you agree or disagree with that, please <laughs> yeah. drop us a comment. If you'd like to hear us talk about any other Grateful Dead posters, if you think there are any others that are more valuable or cooler than this one, let us know. And we'll be back soon with another concert poster conversation. Thank you again for liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel.